Kim, how's your Thanksgiving Day plans going? Well, it's the end of the day. Uh, I'm kind of winding down. Good times today, visiting with friends and relatives, and it's a, it's a good day. How about yours? It's the same. I always enjoy Thanksgiving. It's You know, you don't have to hassle with gifts and trees and the big decorations, and you just eat, and then you eat, and after it's all <laughs> over, they put it back out, and you eat some more. Yeah. So how can that be bad? Yeah, I, I can't think of any way at all. Well, I'd, I'd like for everyone to know that we're not crazy. I mean, we enjoy Thanksgiving, but still, I like to talk about bees, and I've been looking forward to this. Hi, I'm Kim Flottam. And I'm Jim Tew. And we're coming to you today with Honey Bee Obscura, where we'd like to talk to you about some of the old questions that happened long ago and are still relevant today. Kim, that question is, can comb honey be manufactured by machinery so as not to be told from genuine. What has changed, if anything? Can we make fake comb honey? You are listening to Honey Bee Obscura, brought to you by Growing Planet Media, the folks behind Beekeeping Today podcast. Each week on Honey Bee Obscura, host Kim Flottam and Jim Tu explore the complexities, the beauty, the fun, and the challenges of managing honeybees in today's world and engaging an informative discussion meant for all beekeepers, long timers, and those just starting their journey with bees. So sit back and enjoy the next several minutes as Kim and Jim explore all things honeybees. There's a lot of ways to look at that. You said 1910, that question was asked? It was 1910 at a publication okay, well, that AI wrote that. Techno- technology has come a long way since then. So looking at it from today's perspective, we can now digitally print, 3D print beeswax comb or wax comb that's not beeswax. Huh. Let me, okay, let me catch up now. So you can actually use beeswax to make this comb or... You can also make a product out of plastic that is beeswax comb. Is that what I understood you to say? Well, you can do that, too. There was, uh, You can make it out of beeswax, and you can make it out of wax that isn't beeswax. And not too long ago, there was a fellow out in California named Herb Drapkin who made it out of plastic. And, of course, that wouldn't have been edible. But he made frames that were plastic the size of, you know, with the right size cell, the right yeah, slant. yeah. I, re- uh, I remember him, Kim. We don't we don't have him anymore. He's he's crossed over. He put a lot of time in that. It was heavy plastic. I think he was trying to have a frame so heavy that you didn't have to uncap it. You could just spin it fast and sling the honey through the cappings. But to my knowledge, it never did work, did it? Well, it never took off for whatever reason. It cost, weight, whatever. It was called permacomb. And you still might see references to it in some of the older journals. Uh, So it it came, it tried, and it went. And I don't think it's still around very much at all. But the new stuff, there were some people in, I believe, Europe not long ago who were able to uh, 3D print using pure beeswax at the right depth and the right angle of the cell, fully drawn comb. So that does exist. So they're making they're making beeswax comb. So you could, in theory, give your colony comb that's already drawn out. Between you and me and the fence post, I think probably the most expensive or the most valuable piece of equipment you own is a fully drawn frame. Bees have to yeah. put no energy into it at all, and it's ready to go. So if you've got a beeswax comb and it appears beeswax that the bees like, you've just saved yourself a whole lot of energy and a whole yeah. lot of money. Well, save the bees that too, because uh, I was just doing some reading just a couple of nights ago about how difficult it is for these pioneering swarms to get those first few combs built and how desperate it is and how much better luck they have the second season. So I'm thinking, you know, if you're a beginning beekeeper and you're really trying to get that package colony started off to a good jump start and you don't have comb, you don't have any beekeeper friends to give you comb. What, could you buy three or four frames of this to help them out? Well, I know you could for a while. I'm not sure <clears throat> on its availability anymore. Um, I haven't had a chance to look lately. What lots of people are saying, or were, were saying, was that it worked 
when when they got it, it worked. You cut it to fit your frame, you wired it in or not, and put it in the hive, and the bees just jumped on it. You know, that's a good point, Kim. You wired it in or not. What was the foundation that this frame was on, this comb was on? Well, it was the same foundation the bees make. It was no foundation. It was the mm. bottom of one c- the cell was the bottom of three other cells on the other side. Well, you got me thinking here. You know, as we do this spontaneous, so I'm making this up as I go along. But does, does it print both sides of the comb at one time, or do you put sheets back to back? to make the comb on both sides. Well, for a long time, there was a video on YouTube that was showing how this went in. And it was it was a machine bigger than your living room, um, taller, than, taller than your living room and longer oh. than your living room. And what went in, one end was liquid wax, and what came out the other end were pieces of drawn comb cut to size. So in that box, you didn't see what happened in that box. But... What came out was ready to use, ready to go, beeswax comb. Okay. All right. Do I know enough to know if we like this or not? (laughs) I mean, this is not like we're recommending it, but it does sound like an alternative to making the bees do it. Yeah. And and what you said earlier was, you know, all you need for a swarm or a, a divide, a small divide, is a couple of frames. You don't need 10 frames of this stuff. Right. You need enough of them to get going so that while they're filling that one up, they're building new ones yeah. to, to get ready for, you know, what comes after. So, so it's, you know, I can see that the investment would be relatively minimal and the benefit would be relatively maximum if it's still available. Better Be is pleased to sponsor today's episode of Honey Bee Obscura podcast. For over 40 years, Better Bee has supplied beekeepers across the country with the tools, equipment, and knowledge needed to succeed. Because many Better Bee employees are beekeepers themselves, they understand your needs and challenges and are better prepared to answer your beekeeping questions. From their colorful catalog to their support of beekeeper educational activities, including this podcast, Better Bee truly lives up to their tagline of beekeepers serving beekeepers. See for yourself at betterbee.com. I, of course, have plenty of old comb, but I'm thinking about the new beekeepers. We've got so many new beekeepers, and they're so desperate. And I realize I've always known how difficult that first season is. And if this helps a novice beekeeper with novice bees, it may not be all bad, but you keep qualifying if it's still available and if, 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 if. Yeah. That's the thing. Because I, I'm surprised. You know, you always challenge on the quality of the wax and the purity of the wax. No problem there, right? Everything's okay with this wax because at some point, that beekeeper is going to recycle that wax into rendered wax and maybe candles or whatever. I'm watching this on YouTube. I don't have a clue on the quality of the wax. They say the quality is pure. It's, you know, it, the bees like yeah. it. So yep. uh, taking them at their word. The assumption is that it's good, but you know that word, assumption. Well, you know, this all started, this whole thought that we had about this discussion was the fact that the AI Root Company, that AI Root himself years ago, had a challenge out that if anybody could uh, manufacture honey in the comb, he what would he do? He had a big reward or something. Right. And it had to do with, uh, had to do with the fact that the, the consuming public would look at comb honey and would look at liquid honey and at the time that he came out with this proposal liquid honey was way way more often not honey at all it was some yeah. sort of sugar syrup so what ai did says if it's honeycomb it's pure honey if it's liquid honey maybe and you can't you can't manufacture you can't make you can't fake comb honey and that was what where his uh, proposal came out is because you can't manufacture comb honey uh, you know it's pure honey in the comb, as opposed to that jar of yellow sticky stuff over there on the shelf. All right. So this is kind of a variation on a theme. You can make the comb, but the bees are making the honey. Right, right. So it's not really artificial honey. It's not really artificial comb because it's made from <laughs> beeswax. 
We sound like we're trying to sell this stuff, Kim. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm just trying to understand it. But it doesn't, it doesn't really mean that we can go rushing to the AI root company and say, we found it. Here is fake honey and fake comb and every, uh, people are paying real money for it. No, no, not really. This is a variation on a theme. Well, there's, there's one more facet to this. Uh, this past year, better be brought out some drawn comb made out of not beeswax, but a, a food grade wax that if you wanted to, you could eat it and it wouldn't be harmful. And, and the purpose of this is basically the same as you're going to give it to bees to get a start with. You're going to harvest the honey in there by uncapping it. You're going to reuse the comb, but you're not going to mix it with the beeswax when you melt your other comb. And, and as I understand it, it works quite well. I tried it. My bees liked it. They jumped right on it. Uh, other people have said um, it was a little bit different than that, but my luck was with it was pretty good. Now, is that fake honeycomb? It's got real honey in it. <laughs> what is it? Okay, better be. Don't take this the wrong way, but is it fake honeycomb? Well, it's not beeswax comb. Right. So is artificial a better word? Is it an artificial honeycomb? That's probably pretty good. You know, they're not doing it to try and fool people. They're trying to right. do it to give people a leg up on getting their bees started. Yeah. And I, 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 for one, think it's a good idea. The issue is getting it blended with beeswax. But, um, you know, they're really upfront about don't do this. You can, you can melt it down and make candles out of it. So from a beekeeper's perspective, it has all the value of beeswax. Uh, in terms of making comb, making candles, being reusable. That's really interesting, Kim, because that, to my knowledge, that paraffin kind of material, it must be some kind of paraffin-based material, is normally considerably cheaper than beeswax. Yes, and there's, there's the advantage. You get a leg up because you got comb already drawn, and it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Yeah, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. If you wanted to, you can still make a candle out of it. Yep. But, all right, all right. You know, all this is really kind of interesting, isn't it? Because all those years ago in 1910, when this was kind of in the latest news about people trying to manufacture this stuff artificially, that has taken to this point for us to get to where it's not inconceivable <laughs> that you could make a fake honeycomb. Yep. And uh, whatever. So we're probably closer than ever, but we still haven't done it. It's, and, you know, there's been plastic comb. I don't know who all has tried it. Have you seen, this is off the subject, I'll touch it and get back to our topic here, but there used to be aluminum combs. Yes. There used to be what? Those old aluminum combs. Yes. That, I've got some of those. Those things were all the rage for a while, weren't they? They are until you drop one and bend it. Well, the other thing, too, that I was told that uh, you, you couldn't winter bees on it because the bees couldn't stabilize the, the cluster temperature because the outer exposed edges of the aluminum would wick the coldness through the center of the frame and would cool the brood trying to winter. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. As the uh, metal sheet stabilized itself, it would wick in coldness. Yep. But I don't know. Everything I saw was always an antique. Yeah. I only bring this up, Kim, at this point, because we tried everything through the years to help the bees with this comb situation. And it looks like that we're pretty close to being able to do it now. Well, I guess I guess my advice would be is if you if you find some and it's for sale, try it and and know what you're getting into and know what can come out of it. If it's made out of beeswax, it's pure, wa pure wax, and the bees will fill it and cap it, and you can uncap it and extract the honey, and yep. and you're yep. in good shape. All things considered, it's a leg up. You know, I'm listening to you talk, Kim, and you know what's coming. Do you remember when we gave up and began to accept plastic jars more and more and not use glass <laughs> jars every time, and the beekeepers would show up with the veins in their neck popped out and their eyes bloodshot? that it was not natural to use plastic jars for comb, for, uh, for storing honey. This is going to be the same. This is going to meet resistance because it's not the bees doing it. It's us doing it. But it is a new tool. It is interesting. Uh, nobody seems to be trying to hoodwink anyone with it. 
Probably ought to have a look at it while it's available. And the other part of that is is those same people that worried about plastic bottles versus glass bottles are the same people that are worried about plastic boxes, plastic frames, plastic tops, plastic bottoms, all of those things that seem to be working pretty well uh, because they were designed by people who had the bees in mind as opposed to people who had the beekeeper in yeah. mind. Uh, all things considered, yeah, I think I think trying it should be should be on your list. Give it give it a chance. It, it may or may not. You know, other things have come and gone. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go back now to the turkey table, or are you going to call it done? I'm going back for a second helping. There's some things I won't go into it, but there's some there's some components of my turkey day dinner that I only get on turkey day, <laughs> so I have to go eat it because it won't come around again till Christmas. Yep. And then beyond that, it won't come around again till next November. Okay. Well, enjoy. I enjoy talking about this. This sounds like the beekeeping has got some, you know, novel new ideas that are are really uh, on the front burner yep. with this, with these new devices that can can three D print like that. So, see what you think. Believe me, beekeepers will have an opinion in a hurry. If it works, it'll be around. And if it doesn't work. You better buy it quickly so you can have something to show future beekeepers what it was there you go. early on. Enjoy your pumpkin pie. I will. Pecan pie in my case. Oh, pecan. pecan pie. Even better. Yeah. Okay. Everybody who listened this far, everybody who listened, thank you for tuning in and letting us go on and on. And if you, have, if you try this stuff or have an opinion, let us know about it. We're trying to decide what our opinion is. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.